Hey guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So, have you ever heard about the National Gene Bank or about the Gene Bank for Seeds? If you haven't heard about it, then in today's video, you will get to learn what this Gene Seed Bank is all about. Apart from this, we will also be discussing about the two important maritime exercises that have recently taken place. Apart from this, a lot of interesting questions from the states are also there in this video. So let's begin today's video because it has a lot in store for you all. Okay. But before that, if you haven't subscribed our channel till now, then guys do subscribe and hit the bell notification. And also you can join this telegram group where you will get the PDF of this session. And the link of this telegram group is in description below. So go to the description and just join uh, this group by clicking on that link. And remember, you need to have a telegram application in your mobile phones in order to join that group. Okay, so here we have the first question, which is very interesting because it is about the seed bank, gene seed bank or gene bank for seeds, whatever it is. Okay, so the very first question is, Recently, Union Minister for Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, Narendra Singh Tomar, has inaugurated the world's second largest refurbished state-of-the-art National Gene Bank for Seeds at the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources. The National Gene Bank was established in the year 1996 to preserve the seeds of plant genetic resources for future generations and has the capacity to preserve about 1 million junk plasm in the form of seeds. India's seed vault is at Changla in the Himalaya. Where is the National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources located? Now guys do pay attention to this question because this is not only important for your GA part but it can also come in your ARD part. Okay, so it has a two-fold importance attached to it. Okay, so do listen to me very carefully. Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh and Maharashtra are in the options out of which Delhi is the right answer. So this is located in Delhi at Pusa. Pusa Road is the place and Pusa Road in New Delhi. So here it is located and ultimately this National Gene Bank is also located at Pusa. So the other way around this question can be framed is where is the National Gene Bank for seed located? Then you should know that answer is Delhi. Okay. Now let's discuss this in detail because I know that this is very complex and cannot be understood by just reading it. Therefore, we are going to discuss it in detail now. So the very first thing we have already discussed in the question and it does not require any kind of explanation. Okay, so what is a gene bank? Basically, gene banks are biorepository which preserve genetic material in the form of seed plants and tissue cultures. Let's understand it in very basic terms, okay? Plant ke genes ko conserve kiya jata hai in gene banks. Plants, uh, how do they conserve the plant genes in the form of gene, genetic materials or genetic material ke kaha paaye in, uh, in the form of seeds or, or tissue culture okay tissues are found in the parts of plants for example leaf stem so living tissues are there in the parts of the plants so in the form of tissues as well as in the form of seeds the genetic material of plants is conserved now, why do uh, the people conserve the genetic material of plants? The basic purpose is first, the basic purpose is the conservation. There would be some kind of species of plants that are at the verge of extinction or that are very important but are found very, uh, very less at very specific locations. Therefore, they need conservation. So, first purpose is conservation, conservation of genetic material of plants. The second purpose is research researching on the plants how the future generations of the plant would be would look like and what would be the characteristics of the future generations of a certain plant that would be studied through the genetic material of the plant third purpose could be hybridization okay if the uh, scientist 
want to create a new kind of species because we have heard about the genetically modified crop crop products crop yields so what are these genetically modified crops they are nothing but the result of hybridization hai na to in order to do hybridization also the seed uh, seeds generate sorry plant genetic genetic materials are stored so we have come across three main purposes for which the genetic materials of plant can be stored but there could be many reasons but or largely there are only three reasons first conservation second research and third could be hybridization okay so these are the various purposes for genes are for which the genetic materials of plant are stored now how are they stored they are stored in the form of seeds or tissues seeds so directly we are uh, we can found the seeds tissues are in the form of either in the form of living tissues or which are known as germplasm or through the part of the plant so germplasm is found in the parts of the plant be it the stem be it the leaf be it the herb whatever it is okay so i hope that this much is clear to you that is the whole uh, whole mechanism behind the national gene bank so they conserve the genes of the plants so that conservation of the indigenous plant varieties can be done now this is very much related to the current affairs therefore the current news that we have here because of conservation of the indigenous varieties of plants this national gene bank was established okay so this national gene bank was first established in 1996 and right now it has been refurbished with the state of the art facilities means modern technologies and facilities and also remember after refurbishment it has become the world's second largest national gene bank that has the largest number of genes okay gene uh, genetic material of plant okay the first one is located in norway the largest one okay now let's have a look at this national gene bank why was it established so the national gene bank was established in the year 1996 to preserve the seeds of plant genetic resources again we are talking about the genetic material the, uh, the conserve the seeds of the plants so that the genetic research can be done for future generations and it has the capacity to preserve about 1 million germplasm in the form of seeds so germplasm in the form of seeds is conserved in this national gene bank and the capacity is 1 million okay germplasm is a living tissue from which new plants can be grown and germplasm is found in uh, the different parts of the plant okay and also in the form of seed presently the bank is protecting 4.5 to lakh accessions means the genetic materials out of which 2.7 lakh are indian germplasm so what does it mean indian germplasm indigenous germplasm are there and the basic focus here is also to protect the indigenous varieties now this reminds me that recently a chip has also been launched by the government that will contain the indigenous genes of cows you have to tell me the name of that chip in the comment section below okay so we have discussed this i hope that you have understood it the next point that come here is this now this point i have put specifically for the nabard students because as i told you in the beginning itself that it does not only have importance for your ga part but it also has relevance in your ard part so this can become a question in your ard okay in rbi and sebi i don't think that they would go to such lengths that they would ask the kinds of facilities and the average temperature but in ard they can definitely ask this thing so here you need to know that national gene bank has four kinds of facilities seed gene bank the temperature of seed gene bank is minus 18 18 degree celsius cryo gene bank the temperature is minus 170 degree to 196 degree celsius in vitro uh, vitro gene bank 25 degree celsius is the temperature and field gene bank there is no uh, minimum temperature requirement here to and the purpose of these facilities is to cater to the long, long term as well as medium term conservation 
it stores different crop groups such as cereals millets medicinal aromatic and narcotics uh, plants or crops now these three points are telling you additional facts okay india also has a national animal gene bank which is located at the national bureau of animal genetic resources in karnal haryana do remember these three points national animal gene bank located at national bureau of animal genetic resources in karnal haryana the world's largest uh several mod global seed vault is located in norway india seed vault is located in changla in ladakh which is in himalayas okay seed vault is basically a warehouse of seeds okay and why do we need to store the seeds because the seeds are used for planting in case seed reserves or biodiversity elsewhere are destroyed therefore we keep the seeds in storage okay that was all about the national gene bank i hope that you have found this concept interesting and you have understood it well but still if you have any queries then you can just ask me in the telegram group and also in the comment section below now let's move on to the next question which state has become the first state in india to give smart health cards to its citizens Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Maharashtra are in the options. Out of which Odisha is the right answer. Now, first of all, you need to know that this is given under Biju Swasthya Kalyan Yojana. Okay, so this is the scheme. Uh, this is the health. insurance scheme which was launched by the odisha government in place of the ayushman bharat scheme so under this scheme 5 lakh rupees uh, treatment up to 5 lakh rupees is given to the poor families now under this scheme only smart health cards have been issued which will allow the beneficiaries to avail the health benefits in a 200 health chain hospitals basically in 200 health care hospitals across health चेन सो हॉस्पिटल चेन्स होती है ना जैसे अपोलो की है सो सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ हॉस्पिटल चेन्स अक्रॉस इंडिया ओके सो दिस इज नॉट ओनली रिलेटेड टू ओडिशा ओनली नाउ द बेनिफिशरीज ऑफ बीजू स्वास्थ्य कल्याण योजना हु पोजेस द स्मार्ट हेल्थ कार्ड कैन अवेल द बेनिफिट ऑफ द स्कीम अक्रॉस इंडिया दैट्स वाई आई टोल्ड यू दिस नंबर बिकॉज दिस इज टेलिंग यू अबाउट द पैन इंडिया एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस स्मार्ट हेल्थ कार्ड now how much amount is given or how much uh, uh, insurance is given under this scheme so the people who possess the smart health card the families the females of that family will get treatment of up to rupees 10 lakh and other members of the family will get treatment of up to 5 lakhs under this biju swasthya kalyan yojana okay so these were the facts related to this uh, this uh, smart health card that has been launched by odisha government and by launching this card odisha government became the first state in india to launch such kind of a card now what is this smart health card this might be the question that was triggering your mind right so the smart health card is basically if you have heard uh, about the national digital health mission that was announced by the central government so in this mission also the one component of this mission was to issue digital health cards to the people and in those digital health cards all the information of the patient the past record past medical record of the patient would be there in that digital health card on the similar lines this smart smart health card will also possess all the medical history of the patient and this card would be basically would be a, either a digital version or a paper containing a barcode however in case of odisha it is a card a card that is given to the beneficiaries it is very similar to a atm card which has atm cards also has emv chip so this smart health card also has a, an emv chip that contains all the medical history record of the patients now by containing this card by having this card the patients can show this card to the hospitals and the doctors would know all the history the medical history of the patient at one instance and can be can treat the patient instantly 
so that is why this is important and remember that odisha became the first state to launch this card and also do not get confused here that this card was launched under the national digital health mission not at all it is just for your reference that in national digital health mission also the government is planning the union government is planning to issue such digital health cards to the beneficiaries of uh, health care schemes of the government of india right now odisha has launched such kind of a card under its own biju swasthya kalyan yojana i hope that these distinctions are clear to you now let's move on to the third question for what purpose is the kar khandar scheme launched by the jammu and kashmir government for providing free health benefits for providing scholarship to scst for providing livelihood opportunities for providing training to artisans and weavers for upliftment of socially backward so the right answer here is option d for providing training to artisans and weavers is the basic purpose of this kar khandar scheme that has been launched by the jammu and kashmir administration okay so under the scheme basically training will be provided to the artisans and weavers now what is the main point here that you need to remember the first point is this only the purpose of the scheme and the second point that you should just you should be aware about is that rupees 2000 will be given to uh, rupees 2000 per month will be given to the trainees and rupees 2000 will also be given to the trainers however the trainers will get rupees 2000 per month for per student per trainee okay so that is the uh, distinction between the stipend or the honorarium that is given to the trainee trainees and the trainer also remember 25000 will also be given to the trainers for purchase of raw material and for logistic purposes so this is the other fact related to this karbanda karkandar scheme that is important for you to know apart from this this was the whole crux of this scheme moving on to the next question ins tabar participated in konkan exercise with hms westminster of the royal navy at which port did harbor phase of the konkan exercise take place now guys related to this konkan exercise the very first point that we have is that this is a naval exercise the first edition of this exercise took place in 2004 the third point is that this exercise takes place in two phases first phase is sea phase and second phase is harbor phase so the sea phase takes place in the sea itself and harbor phase takes place at the port of each of these countries be it india or be it uk whichever is the hosting country of this exercise so from the options itself i hope that you have already guessed that the hosting country this time is uk therefore the port is also belong to uk the port also belongs to uk so which port is this option c ports mouth this is the port this is the harbor where the harbor phase of this konkan exercise took place okay apart from this the sea phase takes place in the sea itself in the ocean itself now all you also need to know that what is the name of the air force exercise and the army exercise that india conduct with united kingdom so india conducts indradhanush with the air force of uk and ajay warrior with the army of uk okay and this konkan is with the navy of uk so guys whenever you are doing any kind of military exercise do pay attention to the military force that is participating in that exercise okay so ajay warrior is an exercise between india uk dash army navy uh, air force coast guard then what would be the answer army okay so that's all about this question now let's move on to the next question where did sea cat 21 exercise take place first of all this is the 20th edition of this exercise and the full form of this exercise is south east asia co 
coordination and training exercise. which is led by USA this time and remember this was the 20th edition this is the full form Southeast Asia coordination and training exercise and this time it was led by United States of America where did it take place it take place in uh, Singapore this time so Singapore is the uh, venue of this CCAT exercise now remember India also participated in this exercise and a total of 20 countries, 20 other countries apart from India and UK, US also participated in this CCAT exercise, which is an exercise to increase the interoperability of all these navies in the times of crisis. So in order to increase the interoperability of different navies uh, in the ocean, in the sea surrounding Singapore, this time, this time, because Singapore is the uh, host country or in general, the Southeast Asian nations or the Southeast Asia, in order to increase the interoperability of the navies in the Southeast Asia, this exercise is conducted. Okay, so that's all about this exercise. There is nothing much in which you have to cram your mind. Okay. So that's all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed the video and enjoyed the facts that I have told you. Thank you so much for watching the video.